Those final three episodes of Harry and Meghan's Netflix series were released this morning. Within the final episodes, Prince Harry speaks about the breakdown of his relationship with his brother William and blame the media for Meghan suffering a miscarriage. Other revelations include the Duke saying a joint statement was put out without his permission in his or his, and his brother's name, denying a story that William had bullied him out of the royal family. He's also accused the palace of feeding stories about the Duchess to the press to avoid other less favourable stories from being published. What is going on here? Let's speak to Charlie Ray, former royal editor at The Sun. Afternoon to you, Charlie. It's interesting, isn't it? Normally when a, a series come out, comes out, they, they put all the good stuff at the beginning and then over the course of the next two or three, nothing much happens and it becomes a bit disappointing. Um, I would suggest, Charlie, that all the, 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 the big stuff, frankly, is happening now. These are significant revelations, true or not. Yeah, they are significant re revelations, sorry, and good afternoon, Ian. Um, the, 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 uh, he's certainly up to the ante with the war with him and his family. There is no question about that. I mean, the criticism of his brother uh, and his father, you know, he says uh, at this meeting that they had at Sandringham, the, Sandringham, the famous Sandringham summit, where they were discussing the Megxit scenario, uh, that uh, William, it was terrifying to have my brother scream and shout at me mm. and my father say things that just simply weren't true. Well, hang on a second. Harry, Harry was a soldier. What was terrifying, I would imagine, what more terrifying would have been the two tours of Afghanistan he did when he was being shot at, rather yeah. than having a squabble uh, or an argument with his brother. We've all had squabbles in our own families. We've all had shouting matches uh, with our families. I wouldn't describe them as terrifying. Uncomfortable, yes, but not, not terrifying. Yeah. And he's actually suggesting that his father is a liar. Uh, in, in this. Uh, absolutely. I mean, this is this is what I mean. This is powerful stuff, isn't it? I mean, this, this is, is and game-changing uh, stuff, Charlie. It is game-changing stuff, and to the to the point that I now firmly believe that these two will not be invited to the coronation yeah. uh, next next year. I can't see how they can be invited and asked to come over with all these sniping uh, and allegations that 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 they're thrown around uh, at all. I mean, they. they if you watched all the six episodes, what a terrible life they've had yeah. with their multi-million pounds and their very fancy houses in Montecito and private jets and everything else. Um, you know, it's just... They, they paint such a terrible picture of the life that they had. Um, and to be fair to them, they did cover in the, the, these things that they, how they were fated uh, at, at the start. And I think... Um, what, Harry has got a point that, you know, they became very, very popular. There's no question about that. But I don't think that their popularity at that point uh, caused a problem with other members of the royal family because they, they you know, Catherine and William uh, are fated everywhere they go and so were Harry and Meghan. There's no question about it. They were the young royals that were going to come along and keep the monarchy, the institution yeah. going. But they were the ones who chose to step back. And the, the fact as well that he said, this, this suggestion that uh, after this meeting, the Sandringham meeting, that there was um, a story which was suggesting that Willie, William had bullied uh, Harry and Meghan out of the royal family and uh, th that his people then issued a joint statement, uh, something with his name attached to it, where he says, I couldn't believe it. No one asked me permission to put my name to in a statement like that. Well, I don't remember him... Uh, you know, calling out that statement at the time. And I'm surprised because he's calling out everything else so far. And he's saying that this is an example of the, the uh, William's office lying to protect him, whereas not protecting him and Meghan with the truth. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's quite dynamite stuff, this. And you're right. You know, we've had to sit through four or five hours of, of this, this, this docu-series to get to the, the nitty-gritty. And just a couple of other things, you know, she talks about um, uh, that, uh, you know, when she was going to her wedding and travelling in the royal car, she suddenly saw these thousands and thousands of people in the street and couldn't believe that there was going to be thousands and thousands of people in the street. And I'm thinking, well, you know, what, you, what would you expect? You're marrying a prince of the, of, uh, you know, of, yes. of the United Kingdom. And you, you don't think there's going to be people who are going to be out there. Has she not watched videos before or news items before of other royal weddings? Yep. And then, then there was this South African thing. You remember the 
the interview that she gave to Tom Bradby of ITN, which was an agreed interview. Uh, it, she, as she says, it was given the green light by the palace to do the interview. And there's, uh, there's one part of it where this is the famous part where Tom says, how are you? And Megan says, well, I'm, thanks for asking. Not many people have cared how much how, how I am. Then she then she goes back into, you know, talking about it. She says, I did not realise that that would be included in the interview. And you think, well, hang on a second, you've agreed yeah. to the interview. There's a guy standing there with a camera and a microphone. Yes. Pointing at you. <laughs> you know, what, that's the clue that it's going to be published. It's just the way they, they seem to see things. And I think it's getting bitter and twisted. And don't forget, Ian, January the 10th, we've got Harry's book out, Spare. Yeah. I suspect we're going to get a lot, lot more of this stuff coming out in it. Yeah, I, I said so too. Charlie, thank you as ever. It's always lovely to have you on. Charlie Ray is the former royal editor over there at The Sun with us here on Talk TV. I think this is, I think this is all rather simple, actually. I think there are two major things going on here. Uh, maybe three. There's pro probably, I'm sure, a lot more. And we will all have our own opinions on this. Um, this is a man I, I've always sensed is still very much in grief, and I think if I was him, I would probably be in the same situation. Uh, therefore, a lot of what he believes, a lot of what of his, his experience is fed through that prism. And why would it not be? And maybe William was able to not do that, and perhaps because of his different status in the royal family, it, it was something he could do. Uh, maybe he just didn't react to grief in the same way. Everybody has d different ways of dealing with things, but something such as the death of his mother in those circumstances when he was that age, I just think Harry never fully was able to, to, to get over that. And, and whilst nobody fully gets over it, you learn to live with it. I think he's just had greater struggles in that respect. The second thing, which is, I, I just think, a basic human thing, who doesn't want to tell their own story? Who doesn't want to tell their side of things? We've all had conversations with ourselves, haven't we, in the kitchen when you're cooking dinner or something because you've been wronged that day by a colleague or a boss or a mate in the pub and you kind of go over, I wish I'd said this, I wish I was able to get that. He, he has an enormous platform to do what I think everybody else would wish to do. And, of course, the third thing, which is stating the obvious, um, his views are only informed because he's a former royal. If he was remained in the institution, he wouldn't be saying any of this stuff. He would have realised that, like, you know, bad things go on, it's it's annoying, it's, like, outrageous and injustice, but that's what I'm part of. I just have to take it on the chin and move on. Because he's moved out, then he can have those opinions. So it's allowed him that room to uh, to sound off in that kind of way. So... I kind of don't blame him, but I do think what, what I find a real shame. And do you know what? I, I genuinely struggle to look at those images when I've watched. I've watched one and a half of these things. The six have been out. I doubt whether I'll watch any more. I'm just not that interested. But what? For me, every time I saw those pictures of him as a little kid, particularly walking behind his mother's coffin, I struggled to watch that. In the same way that anyone who's a parent um, and, and I have young kids would. I think you'd have the same. Any, any of those stories that involve young children, there's been some horrific ones of late. Um, I, I really struggle to read any of that, and I struggle in the documentary of watching him as a little boy, um, and William as well as a little boy, is being wheeled out in, at different occasions. You know, they were taught from a young age, just smile, say nothing, just smile, be polite, move on. And to go through that through your school, I can't imagine what that life was like, but losing your mother and then... Going through all of that, I, I do have a problem seeing that because I can imagine the pain he, he must have been in. I, I find that actually tantamount to terrifying. And I, I can't for one second get beyond that and imagine that that has been a huge part and parcel of, of, of where his life went. And he wanted a different kind of life. He saw that experience with his mum and he wanted to move on from it. So I just really don't... I don't think he's... I don't buy into the, uh, you know, who are this scandalous couple, why don't they shut up and all the rest of it. It's up to them. It's not North Korea. You know, if you don't like it, don't watch it. It's as simple as that. I will. I, I watched one and a half because of my job. I don't have any desire to watch the rest of it. I don't have a massive opinion of them either way. I don't think they're Lucifer um, and uh, Chairman Mao combined. I don't think they're evil people. I, I, I have, I'm a bit indifferent to it, to be honest. Uh, but I do think it's significant. And I 
think of that time when he was bereaved and without his mum. You know, his, I don't imagine his dad being the guy that held him up in his arms, cuddled him and said, you know, we're going to try and make this all right. I don't see that being part of the way they deal with each other. But him and William, the thought of them consoling each other back then, and now this, to the point then maybe never going to talk again, which kind of makes you realise that when we saw those images uh, when the Queen died of the four of them walking together, Kate and, Will Kate and William, Harry and Meghan, well, we thought, oh, is this, the, is this OK? They clearly did that for the cameras, all four of them. Uh, it looks as if they, I think Charlie Ray is probably right, I doubt whether they're going to be invited to the coronation based on this, because this is genuinely, it will be seen from the palace perspective as completely indiscreet, but it's very personal as well. He talks specifically, not about certain individuals, about specific individuals.